Since this 2D airfoil tutorial also features scripting, we're going to start by opening up a replay control window. And we'll leave this on the side. This will record everything we do during this session. So first thing we're going to want to do is import the points. So I'm going to say import geometry, formatted point data. I'm going to browse to my NACA profiles and select one. So here's my profile data. But if I want, I can also have it import curves and surfaces. And really what it's doing is creating those curves and surfaces from the formatted point data. So I say apply. It created a series of points. So here's a series of points, each of which has a name. I can say show point names, and you can view the point names. And this is a sharp tip trailing edge. And it also then created curves through those points. The curves also have names. And these names are going to be important for the scripting later. They will remain consistent with every file that I import will have the same points and the same curve names. Here's how it looks inside my replay script. You can see here's the step to import the geometry with these points, curves, and surfaces. The rest of this is just bookkeeping stuff. The next step will be to create the far field. And since we know that this airfoil has a chord length of 1 and starts at 0, 0, 0, I can base my far field on that. We're going to create some points. The first one will be at x equals 0 and y equals negative 1.5, just down there. The second will be at one positive 1 1.5. Now this is much smaller than we would do for a realistic far field, but uh, we want it to be small just so we can see all the mesh at once for this tutorial. And the last point will be the one just directly upstream at y equals 0 and x equals negative 1.5. Next will be to create some curves. Create curves. And I'm going to change the name on these curves. Instead of in the inherited part, I'm going to put them in the far field part. Between here and here, curve 0, 0, and then here to here, curve 0, 1. Last one, we create an arc between three points. And then I like to often create a surface also. I'm going to put the surface in a new family called fluid. And I'll pick these curves. So now let's look at how that appeared in the replay script. Here you can see where I created the points. I see point, geom, point, and so on. It gives the point XYZ location. Then after creating all my points, it created a new family uh, for that far field. And, and then it said I see curve create from points in the far field part, curve name will be curve point zero zero from points zero three and point zero two. So you can see how the scripting works. It builds on the earlier entities that were created. You can see here it goes through creates another curve. Uh, after it's created all the curves, it creates a surface from two to four curves in the part name fluid. Surface name is surf00. Zero zero. And then here are the uh, four curves that were created. Now one extra side thing that you might notice is that there's a lot of extra commands in here that aren't really meaningful. Uh, they're more to record things like the undo groupings and, and those sorts of, of commands. So what you can do is clean them out. You go to the end line here, and there's this last button here called clean put that and it will delete many of those lines and reduce the number of the reduce the length of this. Even some of these remaining lines are, are removable. And there's a clean filter. You can say edit the filter and you can change which commands get removed automatically. I'm just going to leave the, these ones as they are. But now I've reduced my number. I can say renumber. So there's 65 lines now. I renumber and it goes down to only 30 lines uh, remaining and I can carry on from there. Often I'll do that at the very end of my scripting session. Let's move on with the blocking now. We go to blocking, initialize blocking. We're going to put it in the part of fluid, and we're going to create a 2D planar blocking, which has to be in the XY plane, and apply. This creates an initial block that I can start from, an initial edge block. So very often the first thing we will do is associate edge to curve. Select this edge, select this curve. And then for the remaining three edges, we'll pick all three edges and assign them to these three curves. Middle mouse button to accept. And the edges in, in isomhex had turned green, showing associativity. So now let's uh, snap them into place. And now this represents sort of an H-grid type approach. Let's set some basic sizes. I'm going to go up to the Mesh tab quickly and just set some base sizes here on my uh, far field of 0 0.1 and maybe even on my curves of 0. Point uh, 0, 02 or something like that and apply. Dismiss. I can go into hexa and just basically assign these sizes to the block just to see that initial pre-mesh. 
you get an idea of how it looks right now. It's more of an H-grid try to fit to this shape. It's not ideal. It doesn't capture our airflow. We obviously have more work to do. To make this a C-grid, we're going to use the O-grid tool with plus an edge. So I go to Split Blocks, O-grid block. I select this block number four. With just this single block, it would create an O-grid. For a C-grid, I want to add a face or an edge on this side here, and then apply. And this gives me the C-grid type structure that I can work with. Now I'm going to want to add another vertical split here. And when you're scripting, you can do this vertically, and it works fine here because we know that this is a unit length airfoil. But if I wanted to, I could change my method to prescribe point. And then when I script, split my block, I can pick this point very precisely. It will split based on that. It gives me a different kind of split command. Instead of splitting on a percentage, it splits the grid between vertex 32 and 34, which is, let's show you those. Vertex numbers, vertices. So with this between the two end vertices, 32 and 34, at point 0.179. So it's always going to use that point to control the split, and that will give you the location. Now looking at the topology of our model, you can see that this is the bar field that goes around, and then this central block here represents my airfoil. So we can delete that, since it's not part of our flow topology. This block behind the airfoil represents our trailing edge block. This might also be a good time to fit some of these vertices into place. Move them manually, or we could use an align command, or all different ways to, to adjust these into position. Next, let's associate edge to curves. Edge to curve. This top edge goes to this curve. And actually, let's turn on the project vertices so things snap into place immediately. Similarly, I'll apply this edge to this curve. And then let's zoom in to adjust things more tightly. I slide these edges along to where I want them. And you can see how that is stored. 40 is the number of that vertex along this curve at the point 0.985% length. So if this curve gets created differently and is a longer curve, it'll still be 0.985 of the way along the curve to place that final location. Now when I'm scripting, I want to make sure that my script is robust, and this uh, airfoil could have a lot more curvature uh, in a later run. So let's make sure that we fit these edges to these curves now. Edit Edge, Method, Automatic Linear, and select this edge, and select this edge. And this snaps things into place a little bit better for me, make sure things are better fit. Next we need to associate these, this leading edge to both curves, and we'll associate it to. Note that this concatenated that into one curve. Let's look at the trailing edge. Here's our trailing edge blocks right now. And if we did want to have a blunt edge, what we would want to do is bring these vertices down. Perhaps something like this. And we would end up with, with a mesh of this sort. However, uh, in this case we have a sharp trailing edge, so what we'd rather do is simply collapse this block. We go to Merge Verts, Collapse block. We select this edge as the direction that we want collapsed. We select this block to remove. Middle mouse button to accept, and that block is removed. We zoom in. Move vertex 42. And you can just tuck them into the end there. That's probably sufficient. But some users will prefer to associate vertex to point. This vertex to this point. And when you do that, the vertex turns red, which means it can't be moved and you see very clear that this, this node is moved to point 0.179, which is good for scripting. Now let's reset our sizes and see how the pre- You get an idea now that this block is mapped around. Users might want to move these vertices around to get a, a more even distribution. There's some bunching up here, so maybe move these forward. Do something like that to get a more uniform distribution. Here you can see that we've got much too large of a size off the surface, so we'll use our edge parameters. Select this radial edge, and the sides with the arrow is side 1, the opposite side is side 2. Let's set the number of nodes here to 30, or, and we'll set the spacing 2 to 0 0.005, ratio 2 to 1.2, and apply. And this gives us a new meshing distribution. And there's, there's lots of mesh laws. You could do hyperbolic or, or you know, Poisson or all these. You can even create one from a graph. IGeometric is good enough for this case. And then, of course, we'll want to copy this distribution to parallel neighbors. So just say copy parameters to all parallel edges, and there, there's lots of options there, too, and apply. And you get a result more like this. Now, there's other areas where you might want to adjust the edge distribution. Perhaps a few more elements out here would be good. Instead of 13, we could say 20. And this way, we could say that we were done at this point. If